Well, welcome to Cinnabar. Now today, freedom-loving Oregonians have even more to be thankful for as we approach Thanksgiving. You see, just yesterday, Judge Robert Ratio over here in Harney County issued his ruling on the constitutionality of Measure 114, Oregon's flawed uh, gun control measure. His ruling was that it is unconstitutional according to the Oregon Constitution in its entirety and issued a permanent injunction of barring its implementation. That's great news for the good guys and we can count that win. Of course, we know that this isn't going to be the final word. The, the state is going to appeal it right away. But for now, we can, we can thank Judge Ratio for a well-reasoned and well-articulated ruling here. And he basically took the state's arguments and dismantled them point by point by point in his ruling. And I'm not going to go into every minute detail of this ruling. If you're interested in that, um, Washington Gun Law Channel with William Kirk does an excellent job of doing just that and I'm sure that if he hasn't got a video out yet on it, he will where he will go into minute detail on, on the entire ruling. I just want to kind of touch the high points and talk a little bit how, how it affects real Oregonians out here and, and maybe look into a crystal ball a little bit about the future. Okay, so Judge Ratio's uh, ruling basically took apart both arguments that, that the state had or, or on both parts of this Measure 114. And of course, the, those two portions of Measure 114 were the permit to purchase scheme and the high capacity or anything over 10 round magazine ban. Okay, so on the, on the permit to purchase scheme, really his, his major points were that, first of all, the state admitted and stipulated that the permit would take a minimum of 30 days to, to get approval or to get an answer whether it was approved or disapproved. Now, Oregon was sold on the background check system years ago with an instant background check. You were good to go to a gun store, you could instantly, with, within a very short time, walk out with your gun or have an answer saying no, that you're not eligible to purchase a gun. And that worked that way for years. The Oregon State Police was set up where, where those background checks were done almost instantaneously. We usually had an answer within minutes or certainly we didn't, didn't have to, to come back at a later time to find out. And that's changed over the years. You know, now it's regularly it takes days and sometimes even weeks or when there's a, a, a run on, on purchasing as there was when 114 passed, it was taking months to get your background checks done. Okay, so what the judge is saying is if, if people want to have a firearm for their self-defense or defense of their family or their home, there shouldn't be this long delay to get it because we've stripped them of that, that right to defend themselves or to own a firearm. And, and just because it may be approved at some later date, that, that's a violation of that constitutional right. Okay, the next one, he, he puts it as that this, this permit to purchase, this taking away of your right should not have a rational base policy that requires deference of intermediate, intermediate scrutiny. Okay, basically in layman's term that means this is a God-given, inalienable, inalienable right guaranteed by both the Oregon and the U.S. Constitution, although he's ruling just on Oregon's constitutionality. And we shouldn't have to have a, a process with, with people determining whether you have that right. Now that's, that's going to be one that the left is going to argue really hard against, obviously. The other thing that he ruled on on this permit to purchase is that the state failed miserably to show that it would demonstrate a promotion of public safety in any manner. And, and Judge Ratio obviously um, knows a lot more about firearms than most of the, the judges that we see passing down rulings. And, and so he went into detail about um, you know, how, how we can reload magazines, how, how firearms work um, you know, in, in real life situations and how this, this law is not going to 
promote public safety or enhance public safety in any way and the state failed miserably in an attempt to show that. Now the, the other thing that he mentioned was about FBI background checks. Now we talked about this quite a little bit a couple of months ago that this measure requires an FBI background check to get your permit and the FBI said no. And the issue is that the measure is worded in such a way that these background checks would be be conducted by permit agents or their designees and FBI's regulations on this are very clear that they will only share these background checks with law enforcement so this this notion that that law enforcement permit agents could pass that that responsibility on to designees who were outside of law enforcement was a real problem. It's written into the Measure 114, so the FBI correctly said that's against our policy. We can't do that. Unfortunately, just last week, the FBI, working with with um, the Department, or the F FBI Department of Justice, working with the Oregon Attorney General, has said that well, yes, it's it's against our regulations to do that but you know if Oregon just promises they 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 won't do what the measure says and, and share that information or let it outside of, of uh, law enforcement uh, we'll give you a grace period and and so that you can you can get this thing right and you can change your state law at some point in the future to to um, make it compatible with our regulations um, really a disappointing to see our FBI fail in their mission, this law enforcement mission, and now become kind of a political arm of the current administration and, and, and bow down to, to this, this scheme by the state of Oregon to take away citizens' rights. Um, the, the really disappointing part of this is they, they call it a grace period, but they don't give a date out there. So basically, well, if you guys, you know, if Oregon agrees that they won't do what this measure says, and maybe someday we'll change their state law so that it, it's compatible, and we'll just let you go ahead and, and uh, we'll go ahead and do these background checks so that it'll, it will pass muster with, with the courts. Um, and there's, by the way, there's no date for it. So even though it's just a grace period, take as long as you like. <laughs> you, you may, as long as you promise you'll, you'll take care of it someday, we'll go ahead and start doing your background checks. So that, that's really disappointing to, to see from our, our FBI. Okay, so Judge Rascio says because of, of, and he lists several things and some of them we've talked about, some of them we haven't, says that all of these things unduly frustrate the right to bear arms. So, if any one of these things had had um, been deemed unconstitutional, the, it would have been tossed, and Judge Ratio would have tossed it. But he's saying that all of these things are, frustrate uh, the right to bear arms and are unconstitutional. Now, on the second part of this, he, he was very clear as well on a couple of points that are, are really important, and that this is the, the um, high-capacity magazine ban. Now the first thing he ruled, which is I, I have to applaud, is that magazines are protected arms. Now if we remember right, uh, Judge Karen Immigut up in, in Portland, the federal judge, ruled that they weren't protected arms, that magazines were not protected under the Second Amendment. Judge Ratio says that they are protected under Oregon's Constitution. And, and really to say that they aren't protected is just absurd on the face of it. If, if you think about it, magazines are an integral part of a firearm. So if you don't, if magazines aren't protected, all magazines could be banned or firearms will be useless. It would be no different than saying, okay, um, firing pins are not a protected uh, uh, arm, so we can ban all firing pins, but you can go ahead and keep your guns. <laughs> Same exact thing. The other thing that, that he mentioned and, and this is really important that the way the, the measure is written that any magazine that could be changed to accept more than 10 rounds is, is banned. Well, pretty much any magazine can be changed to accept 10 rounds, or more than 10 rounds. 
even if it's been changed in one direction, it can be changed back. Say you've got a 30 round detachable magazine, you change it to where it will only hold 10 rounds. Well, obviously if you changed it one way, you can change it the other and can go back to 30 rounds. Or if it even started out as a 10 round magazine, it could be modified to take more. And even, and he points this out, tubular magazines or fixed magazines can be modified to hold more than 10 rounds. And there's a, there's a misnomer out there that, that fixed magazines were exempted and they weren't. Only lever actions with fixed magazines and 22s with fixed magazines were exempted. Um, so any other fixed magazine that can be modified to hold more than 10 rounds is illegal. So that, that gun cannot be, um, is banned under, under this law. And, and he correctly pointed that out. And, and so this, our, our, our judge here in Harney County did just a masterful job of, of taking this whole argument from the state apart and, and each individual argument that they brought forward. And, and so we're in a situation now, we know that the state is, is going to appeal this and we don't know at this point whether they'll appeal it to the Oregon Court of Appeals or the Oregon Supreme Court. I suspect it will probably go to the Oregon Supreme Court. Um, you know, the higher it goes in Oregon's court system, I think the less chance we have of them upholding Judge Ratio's uh, ruling. So I think there's a, a, a fair chance that this will be overturned at some point. And we have to thank Judge Ratio. He's taken his time. You know, this should, was supposed to be implemented almost a year ago. Um, he's given us a, a lot of time here to, to avoid this ridiculous set of laws. And, and so, but now we, we've kind of, we've got through our, our grace period here and we've gotten a, a favorable ruling. The nice thing is, is that because he has so very clearly and very well um, We've dismantled all these arguments from the state. Uh, you know, the, 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 any of the court systems that it goes to now, the appeals courts it goes to now, are going to have to deal with how do we explain our reversal of this well thought out and, and rational uh, ruling that's come out of Hardy County. So in, enjoy your holidays. It's a win for the good guys. Um, but of course we know that the fight's long from over. So keep up the good fight. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.